This video is in response to a question from talent Jaden Kasirai and he wants to know how I create the video content that I always post on my social media platforms. I started creating content uh, around 2012, 2013-2014, way before COVID. But what happened is uh, they were not given much attention. But when COVID struck, people were forced to stay at home. That's when people started um, watching my content. Even when I was invited to the USA in 2018, it was after they saw the, 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 the content that I had posted. Um, first of all, I want you to know that I don't use uh, expensive equipment. I use my two Samsung phones as well as um, this small video camera that I bought from my friend Amavo Pinto. He's in Mozambique right now. That is when I feel that I need three cameras, but if I just need two or one, I just use my Samsung phones. When I shoot, it's my daughter who will be on the video camera, or if she's busy, I'll just use my camera stands to, to, to hold the video cameras. And for the editing, I don't have an edit suite, I just use my cell phone. There's an app called KineMaster, that's the one that I use for all my editing. For the graphic designs, I use an app called Fonto. All these apps you can get them on the App Store. And then for the audio, I use my studio where I am right now. Because what I do with the audio is I use a microphone, like right now I'm using a microphone and it's going through the stu studio software, that's where I mix it. my effects, then it comes out nice and then I mix it, I master it so that I boost the volume and then I link it to the video. Then in this studio I also put some extra lights so that uh, I have enough light for the video shots. So in terms of content, I mainly post four types of content. The first one is the jam sessions. I just set the equipment and then set the cameras on the camera stands and then we just jam. Uh, for the jam sessions usually it takes about uh, five minutes. I do them live but the mixing, the mastering, the editing of the video is what takes time. So as we play everything will be going through the studio software. We agree on the tempo of the song, the drumming style and everything, and then I program the drums. Because most of the jam sessions that I do, I don't use a live drama, I just program the drums and I program the percussion. That's why every time you don't see a drama when we do jam sessions, the drums will be programmed. Then after we play, I start by mixing the audio and then mastering the audio and then I start editing the video and then I link the two and then we are done and then next thing I'll be posting it on social media then the next uh, type of content that I post is the tutorials mainly I do tutorials based on questions that my followers ask on Facebook so what I do is I read all the comments that are posted on my Facebook I'm the one who reads all the comments I'm the one who responds to all the comments I don't have anybody who I pay to do that for me. I do everything on my own. And I pick interesting questions. Because the thing is, I receive a lot of questions. So I don't have the time to answer all the questions. Because I also have to work in my studio with artists and do other work. So if I try to reply all the questions, I won't have time to, to, to work in my studio. So what I do is I just pick the questions that I feel... Um, will help a lot of people understand the music industry or what happens um with the music. So after I pick the question, I do a little research so that I, uh, I'm well informed. I just don't want to rely on the information that I know. Then the next thing what I do is I set up the cameras on the camera stands and then I start lecturing and then I clean up the audio, mix the video, and combine the two on my app. And then if it's a guitar tutorial, I will definitely need diagrams and other media. That's when I use that app called Fonto to, 
to, to, to, to create the diagrams and to create other media that I might need to to express myself better on the on the tutorials. Then part B of tutorials is where I do a small jam session. So usually when I do tutorials, I will be alone. So what I do is I create an instrumental to demonstrate what I've been teaching. First of all, I program the drums, then play the bass guitar, play the lead guitar, play the keyboards. And then the instrument that I'll be explaining in that video is the one that I'll play live uh, in front of the cameras. But when I create everything else, like when I program the drums, when I play the bass, the keyboards and everything, I'll just do it off camera. And then after I create the instrumental or the rhythm or the beat, whatever you call it, and then the instrument that I'll be teaching, for example, if I'm teaching guitar, uh, if the lecture is about the guitar, what I'll do is uh, the guitar is the one that I'll play when the cameras are rolling so that my points are made clear. I'm also invited a number of times to speak at album launches, to speak at um, other forums that have nothing to do with music, like uh, men's forums and some functions that are not uh, related to music. So what I do is um, I take my cameras and make sure that the video is recorded. And then for the audio, what I usually do is I take a phone like this and then I use an audio capturing app to capture the audio. So at times when I give speeches, you see me holding a mic. At the same time, I'll be holding a cell phone on my hands. That cell phone will be recording the audio. So that when I get home, I'll put the audio in the studio software and then I start editing the audio, clean it up and boost it up so that I, I get a good sound. And then I, I edit the video and then I combine the two. So after that, I usually cut the videos into small micro content. Because what happens with today's people is that uh, most of them, they've got uh, a very short attention span. So if you post a full 10 minute video, no one will watch it. So what I do is I just cut some small sound bites. And then maybe I post the main video on my YouTube. But the thing with my social media platforms is my YouTube has got very few traction. My main app when it comes to, to social media is Facebook. That's where I get a lot of um, traction. But sometimes when I post something on Facebook, it can have something like 20,000 or 200,000 views. When I post it on YouTube, you might find it is good, just 100 views. So I don't know how to correct that. The fourth type of content that I do is radio interviews. When did you stop that journey with Toko? I was fired in 2007. <laughs> <laughs> when I do radio interviews, I carry my two phones and then I get there on time like 15 minutes before the interview and then I set my camera stands and uh, make sure that the the one who is interviewing me and me are well cap captured. If I'm working with studios like uh, those that are digitalized, I'll ask for the audio after the interview and then they'll give me the audio. But we still have uh, some radio stations that are still not digitalized, so I, I'll have to capture the audio on my own. So I'll use the cameras to capture the audio. And then afterwards, I'll create micro content and post short video clips. That's how I create such content. Oh!